I'm glad you could join us. Go ahead and stab the like button and stick around for the next untold story. The air in the small town of Ravenswood was thick with an unsettling quiet that seeped into the bones of its residents. Nestled in a valley surrounded by dense forests, the town had always seemed a little too secluded, a little too cut off from the rest of the world. The streets were lined with old Victorian houses, their facades peeling and weather-worn, their windows dark and foreboding. At night, the only sounds that echoed through the streets were the whispers of the wind and the creaks of the houses settling into the earth. It was on one such night, with the moon hanging low and full in the sky, that the boogeyman came to Ravenswood. In the heart of town, there stood a house that had long been abandoned. The locals spoke of it in hushed tones, recounting tales of shadows that moved on their own and voices that whispered in the dead of night. The children dared each other to approach it, but none ever got too close. It was said that the boogeyman lived there, waiting for the unwary and the curious. Sarah had heard the stories all her life. As a child, she had been terrified, but as she grew older, she dismissed them as mere folklore, tales spun to keep children from straying too far from home. Now, at 18, she was ready to leave Ravenswood behind for good, to escape the suffocating confines of the town and its superstitions. But something drew her to that house, a pull she couldn't quite explain. One night, driven by a mix of curiosity and defiance, Sarah decided to prove to herself in the town that there was nothing to fear. Armed with a flashlight and a camera, she made her way to the house. The path was overgrown with weeds, the front gate hanging loosely from its hinges. As she approached, she felt a chill run down her spine, but she brushed it off as the cold night air. The door creaked open with a touch, revealing a dark hallway lined with faded wallpaper. The air inside was stale, filled with the scent of decay. Sarah's flashlight flickered as she stepped inside, casting long shadows that danced on the walls. Each step she took echoed through the empty house, the sound magnified by the silence. As she explored the house, she felt a growing unease. The shadows seemed to move just out of sight, and the whispers she had heard as a child seemed to follow her, growing louder with each passing moment. She reached the staircase and hesitated, feeling an almost tangible darkness emanating from the second floor. But Sarah pressed on, her defiance stronger than her fear. The steps groaned under her weight, and the whispers grew louder, forming words she couldn't quite make out. She reached the landing and turned into a hallway lined with closed doors. Her flashlight flickered again, casting brief glimpses of the rooms beyond. She opened the first door and found nothing but dust and cobwebs. The second door revealed a similar scene, but as she reached for the third, she felt a cold hand on her shoulder. She spun around, her flashlight falling to the floor and plunging the hallway into darkness. Sarah's heart raced as she fumbled for the flashlight. When she finally managed to turn it back on, she found herself face to face with a figure that seemed to materialize from the shadows. It was tall and thin, its eyes glowing with a malevolent light. The Boogeyman. Paralyzed with fear, Sarah could only watch as the figure moved closer, its presence suffocating. The whispers grew louder, forming a cacophony of voices that filled her mind. The boogeyman reached out a hand, its fingers long and skeletal, and Sarah felt a coldness unlike anything she had ever known. Just as the hand was about to touch her, she was yanked back by an unseen force. She stumbled, her flashlight spinning out of her hand and illuminating the face of a young girl, pale and ghostly, standing at the end of the hallway. The girl mouthed words that Sarah couldn't hear over the whispers, but she understood one thing. She needed to leave. Sarah turned and ran, the whispers following her, the cold hand of the boogeyman reaching for her with every step. She burst through the front door and into the night, not stopping until she reached the safety of her own home. Breathless and trembling, Sarah locked the door behind her and sank to the floor. The whispers were gone, but the memory of the boogeyman's eyes haunted her. She knew she had to leave Ravenswood, but she also knew that the boogeyman would always be there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for his next victim. The days that followed were a blur for Sarah. She tried to resume her normal life, but the memory of that night clung to her like a shadow. 
She couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched, that the boogeyman was still out there, waiting for the right moment to strike. Her friends noticed the change in her, but she brushed off their concerns with forced smiles and hollow reassurances. At night, the whispers returned, growing louder and more insistent. They filled her dreams with dark, twisted images that left her waking in a cold sweat. The young girl she had seen in the house appeared in these dreams, always silent, always pointing towards something Sarah couldn't see. The sense of dread grew stronger with each passing day. One evening, unable to take it any longer, Sarah decided to visit the local library. She hoped to find some clue, some explanation for the strange occurrences. The library was an old, imposing building, its shelves filled with dusty tomes and forgotten histories. The librarian, an elderly woman with kind eyes, greeted Sarah with a warm smile. Can I help you find something, dear? She asked, her voice soft and soothing. Sarah hesitated before speaking. I... I'm looking for information about the old house on Elm Street. The one everyone says is haunted. The librarian's smile faded, replaced by a look of concern. That house has a dark history. Many people have tried to uncover its secrets, but none have succeeded. Be careful, Sarah. Some things are better left alone. Ignoring the warning, Sarah spent hours combing through old newspapers and records. She discovered that the house had once belonged to a wealthy family, the Harringtons, who had mysteriously vanished over a century ago. The townspeople believed they had fallen victim to a curse, one that brought the boogeyman to their doorstep. As she delved deeper, Sarah found references to a series of disappearances over the years, all linked to the house. Each account was eerily similar. People who entered the house experienced visions, heard whispers, and were never the same again. Some vanished without a trace, while others were found wandering the streets, their minds broken by the horrors they had witnessed. One name kept appearing in her research, Emily Harrington, the youngest daughter of the Harrington family. She was the girl Sarah had seen in her dreams. According to the records, Emily had been the last to disappear, and her body was never found. Determined to uncover the truth, Sarah decided to visit the house again. This time, she brought a notebook, a voice recorder, and a crucifix her grandmother had given her. She felt a mix of fear and resolve as she approached the house, the moon casting an eerie glow over the decaying structure. Inside, the atmosphere was even more oppressive than before. The air was thick with a sense of malevolence, and the whispers started almost immediately. Sarah ignored them, focusing on her mission. She made her way to the second floor, her flashlight illuminating the dark corners where the shadows seemed to writhe. She opened the door to the third room, the one she had been unable to enter before. The room was small and sparsely furnished, with a bed, a dresser, and a large mirror on one wall. The mirror's surface was cracked and tarnished, reflecting a distorted image of the room. Sarah approached the mirror, her reflection staring back at her with a look of fear. As she got closer, she noticed something strange. The reflection of the room was different. It showed a pristine bedroom, with toys scattered on the floor and the bed neatly made. Suddenly, the image in the mirror shifted, and Sarah saw Emily standing behind her. She spun around, but the room was empty. Turning back to the mirror, she saw Emily again, her eyes pleading. Sarah's heart pounded as she realized the girl was trying to communicate with her. Emily, she whispered, her voice trembling. What happened to you? The image in the mirror flickered, and Emily raised her hand, pointing towards the dresser. Sarah followed her gaze and saw a small, ornate box sitting on top of it. She picked it up, her fingers trembling, and opened it to reveal a collection of old letters and photographs. As she sifted through the contents, the whispers grew louder, forming coherent words. They spoke of betrayal, of dark rituals performed to summon the boogeyman. The Harringtons had tried to protect themselves, but their efforts had only made things worse. In their desperation, they had sacrificed Emily, hoping to appease the entity they had unleashed. Sarah's hands shook as she read the final letter, written by Emily herself. It described the terror she felt, the cold touch of the boogeyman, and her hope that someone would one day find her and set her free. A cold wind swept through the room, and the whispers reached a deafening crescendo. The boogeyman was coming. Sarah knew she had to act quickly. She grabbed the crucifix and held it tightly, chanting a prayer her grandmother had taught her. The air around her grew colder, and the shadows deepened. 
The boogeyman's presence was overwhelming, his eyes glowing with a malevolent light. He reached out, but this time, Sarah was ready. She held up the crucifix, the words of the prayer spilling from her lips. The entity recoiled, his form flickering and fading. But Sarah knew this was only a temporary reprieve. The boogeyman was not so easily banished. She needed to find a way to break the curse, to free Emily and end the cycle of terror that had plagued Ravenswood for generations. As the whispers subsided and the house fell silent, she vowed to uncover the secrets of the boogeyman and put an end to his reign of fear. With the whispers momentarily silenced and the house eerily still, Sarah gathered her courage and began to search the rest of the room. The photographs and letters she had found hinted at something deeper, something hidden. She needed more clues, more pieces of the puzzle to fully understand the horror that had befallen Emily and the Harrington family. She moved to the dresser and began to carefully examine its contents. The drawers were filled with old clothes, yellowed with age, and various trinkets that had once belonged to Emily. Among them, she found a small, leather-bound diary. It was worn and fragile, but as she opened it, she realized it was a treasure trove of information. The diary chronicled Emily's life, her fears, and the strange occurrences that had plagued the Harrington household. The entries grew more desperate and terrified as they neared the end, describing encounters with a shadowy figure that matched the description of the boogeyman. Emily had written about her parents' growing paranoia and their ultimate decision to perform a dark ritual, hoping to protect their family. But the ritual had gone horribly wrong. Instead of banishing the boogeyman, it had bound him to the house, turning it into a prison for his malevolent spirit. Emily had become the unwilling guardian of this secret, her spirit trapped in the house along with the entity. Sarah's mind raced as she pieced together the story. The ritual had to be undone, the curse broken. She needed to find out exactly what the Harringtons had done and reverse it. There had to be more clues, more hidden knowledge within the house. Leaving the bedroom, Sarah made her way through the dark, silent halls of the house. The oppressive atmosphere seemed to weigh heavily on her, but she pushed on. She reached the study, a room filled with dusty books and ancient tomes. If there was any place to find information about the ritual, it would be here. As she searched the shelves, she found a hidden compartment behind a stack of books. Inside, there were more letters, old and brittle, and a thick leather-bound book that looked like it hadn't been touched in decades. The book was a grimoire filled with arcane symbols and spells. Sarah sat down at the old desk, the grimoire open before her. The language was archaic and difficult to decipher, but she managed to find the section detailing the ritual the Harringtons had performed. It described the steps they had taken, the incantations they had chanted, and the sacrifices they had made. <laughs> the key to breaking the curse was hidden within these pages, but it required someone with pure intent and a willingness to confront the darkness head on. Sarah felt a chill run down her spine as she realized the enormity of what she had to do. She needed to perform a counter ritual, one that would release Emily's spirit and banish the boogeyman forever. Gathering the necessary items described in the grimoire, Sarah prepared herself for the ritual. She knew she had to be precise. Any mistake could make things worse. The night was deepening, and the moon cast long shadows through the broken windows of the house. The whispers returned, louder and more insistent, as if sensing what she was about to do. With trembling hands, Sarah began to draw the symbols on the floor, using chalk and candles as the grimoire instructed. She chanted the incantations, her voice steady despite the fear gnawing at her insides. The air grew colder, and the shadows seemed to close in around her. As she reached the climax of the ritual, the boogeyman appeared. His form was more solid now, his eyes burning with an intense, malevolent light. He moved towards her, but Sarah stood her ground, continuing the incantation with all her might. The room shook, and the candles flickered wildly. The boogeyman reached out, his fingers inches from her face, when suddenly a bright light erupted from the symbols on the floor. The entity recoiled, letting out a guttural scream that echoed through the house. Emily's spirit appeared beside Sarah, her form glowing with a soft, ethereal light. She joined in the incantation, her voice harmonizing with Sarah's. Together, they chanted the final words, and the light grew blindingly bright. With a final, ear-piercing scream, the boogeyman was engulfed by the light,
The shadows dissolved, and the oppressive weight lifted from the house. The ritual was complete, but Sarah knew the battle was not over. The boogeyman had been banished, but the house still held many secrets. As the light faded, Sarah found herself alone in the now silent room. Emily's spirit was gone, finally at peace. But Sarah knew she couldn't leave just yet. She had to ensure the curse was truly broken, that the boogeyman would never return. There were still answers to be found, and Sarah was determined to uncover every last one of them. With renewed resolve, she picked up the grimoire and continued her search, knowing that the true horror of Ravenswood was far from over. Days turned into weeks as Sarah delved deeper into the history of the house and its dark secrets. She spent hours in the library, consulting old maps, documents, and talking to the few elderly townspeople who still remembered the Harringtons. Despite the ritual, she couldn't shake the feeling that something was still wrong, that the boogeyman was not entirely gone. One stormy night, as rain lashed against the windows and thunder rumbled in the distance, Sarah returned to the house one last time. She carried with her the grimoire and a set of old keys she had found in the library archives, believed to unlock a hidden basement beneath the house. She had learned of this basement from an old journal, a place where the Harringtons had performed their darkest rituals. The front door creaked open, and Sarah stepped inside. The air was thick with the scent of mold and decay, and the house seemed to breathe around her. She moved through the dark halls, her flashlight casting eerie shadows on the walls. As she reached the kitchen, she found the hidden door that led to the basement, concealed behind a rotting pantry shelf. With trembling hands, she unlocked the door and descended the narrow, creaking stairs. The basement was damp and cold, the air heavy with an ancient, malevolent presence. Her flashlight beam revealed strange symbols carved into the stone walls, symbols she recognized from the grimoire. In the center of the basement was an altar, stained with dark, dried blood. Around it were the remnants of candles and other ritualistic objects. Sarah's heart pounded as she approached the altar, feeling the weight of the darkness that had been summoned here so long ago. As she examined the symbols and markings, she heard a faint whisper, growing louder and more insistent. She spun around, but there was nothing there. The whispers intensified, echoing off the walls, filling her mind with fear and dread. She realized that the boogeyman was still here, bound to this place, waiting for another opportunity to break free. Desperate to end this nightmare, Sarah opened the grimoire to the final pages. There, she found a ritual that promised to sever the connection between the boogeyman and the house, but it required a sacrifice of blood. Her blood. Stealing herself, she began to draw the symbols on the floor around the altar, chanting the incantations written in the grimoire. The whispers grew louder, a cacophony of voices urging her to stop, to leave, to run. But Sarah pressed on, determined to end this once and for all. As she reached the final part of the ritual, she took a deep breath and made a small cut on her palm, letting her blood drip onto the altar. The room seemed to shudder, and the air grew colder. The boogeyman appeared before her, more solid and terrifying than ever. His eyes glowed with a burning hatred, and his form twisted and writhed in the darkness. Sarah continued to chant, her voice growing stronger despite the fear that gripped her. The boogeyman lunged at her, but an invisible barrier held him back. The symbols on the floor began to glow, and a bright light filled the basement. The boogeyman let out a deafening scream, his form dissolving into the light. The ground shook violently, and the walls seemed to close in around her. Sarah's vision blurred, and she felt herself being pulled into the darkness. When she awoke, she was lying on the floor of the basement, the altar and symbols gone. The whispers had fallen silent, and the air felt lighter. She struggled to her feet, feeling weak and disoriented. As she made her way up the stairs, she realized that the house was no longer the same. The walls were clean, the air fresh, as if the darkness had been lifted. But as she reached the front door, she heard a faint whisper behind her. She turned, her heart sinking. There, standing at the foot of the stairs, was the boogeyman, his form more menacing than ever. His eyes glowed with an unholy light and a sinister smile spread across his face. You cannot banish me, he hissed. I am eternal. I am the darkness in every shadow, the fear in every heart. You will never escape me. 
Sarah's blood ran cold as the boogeyman advanced, his presence filling the house with a palpable sense of dread. She realized with a sinking feeling that the ritual had failed. The boogeyman had grown stronger, feeding on the fear and the blood sacrifice. With no escape, she backed into the corner, her mind racing for a solution. But the boogeyman was upon her, his cold, skeletal fingers wrapping around her throat. As her vision darkened and the world faded away, she heard his final chilling words. Welcome to eternity, Sarah. You are mine. The last thing she saw was his malevolent grin, and then there was only darkness. The house stood silent once more, a beacon of terror and despair, waiting for its next victim. In Ravenswood, the legend of the boogeyman lived on, a story whispered in fear and caution, a tale that would never end. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video, 